Hello and welcome to your weekly Oracle card guidance. Uh, so I know I've been missing in action in the last couple of weeks and uh, I just had so many things that I had to do and, and think about and uh, I kept thinking I was going to get around to it and I and I just couldn't. And then I was away for a bit and uh, yes, and uh, this is the first opportunity I've had to to actually pay attention to the weekly oracle cards uh, reading and to get it out. I hope you guys have been doing well. And uh, of course, you know, all of these readings are relevant whenever you come to them, whenever you feel drawn to them, whenever you need them. So if I don't come on with a weekly oracle card reading on one of the weeks, you're welcome to go back and just choose any of the readings that I've posted in the last two to three years and um, see which one resonates with you. Go ahead and pick your option. And I'm sure that the message will resonate with you. It is energetic. It is magnetic. You are drawn to whatever it is that you need at a given point. And so, um, yes, I hope that you will use that resource. So, to come back to today's reading, we have three options here. We have three different stones with a very different energy and composition. Uh, so we have this option here. This is your option number one. Your option number two. And the option number three, which is just a simple solar light. So as I said, very different compositions, very different energies from each of these stones. Go ahead, make your uh, selection. And uh, we are using the Fairies Oracle uh, by Brian Freud, uh, Fraud, sorry. And so I have one of his other decks and I have enjoyed using it in the past. And uh, yes, I hope that uh, you will like uh, this deck as well. I find that his decks are not everyone's cup of tea. They have a very specific type of energy, but a very pure, incisive energy. And I feel that one can gain quite a lot from working w uh, with these decks and with this type of energy. Uh, although, as I said, it's not everyone's cup of tea. If you feel it's a bit too uh, pokey for you, too sharp for you, then obviously stay away from it. But I'm sure that you'll find the reading today to be quite enlightening. All right, let's go ahead and begin the reading, make your selection and you can go down directly to your option. So for those of you who've chosen the first option here, we're asking, what is your weekly Oracle card guidance? So what is the message that you've come here to hear? What is it that you need to know right now in order to go ahead and to make the next week or the upcoming weeks a success for yourself? So we have the number 27 and the card is Nelly's the Alchemist. And so we have an energy here, which is very much the buck stops here. We have an energy which is very much, I'm going to go ahead and do what it is that I need to do and bring this to completion and move ahead. I'm going to go ahead and move this along and I'm going to do this with purity of thought and purity of vision and to make this come true. Now I feel here that there is... Um, a maturity that comes with this. It's a sense that the energy that you're embodying right now um, has a sense of experience. It has a, a background to it. It has wisdom attached to it. It has common sense attached to it. It has a degree of understanding, um, which is going to help you move along. Now, I think the thing that's important here is to maintain that uh, you aren't bringing into this equation any form of fear or um, insecurity or lack of confidence. There needs to be a focus on the purity of thought, a focus on where it is that you're headed and what it is that you actually want to do. There's a sense here that anything can be achieved at this moment and any anything at all can be made. This is not to say that it will necessarily be easy. There will be effort required. There will be... Um, 
it'll be it'll be changing it'll be moving to your character it'll help you grow as an individual and it'll help you move through uh, certain spaces in order to come out the other side and I feel that uh, that energy is supported right now and also the energy of bringing things to completion so um, bringing something to an end finishing that assignment finishing that course um, ending that work uh, completing something that's begun completing something that needs to be brought to an end working in partnership with with someone to bring something to an end or you choosing a mentor to bring something to an end there's a sense here that something has the ability to be successful if you would only allow it to be or if you would put in that last bit of effort in order to be able to achieve that and you might have uh, bumped into somebody recently or come across someone who is able to assist you in this way or is a sign that you need to be able to do this for yourself. Um, if there's been something gnawing at you, if there's been something worrying you over many years, uh, something that you haven't completed, now is the time to go back and look at how you can complete that and to be able to do so with a certain degree of maturity and experience behind you that's going to um, be certain of a positive outcome. I'd like to go ahead and read from the book. And what I like about Brian Frout's decks is that they always come with a very solid book, a hardcover book, and not a flimsy little thing that gets torn away um, after the first few uses. I'm going to go ahead and read um, uh, the message that is here for Nelly is the Alchemist. Um, because I feel that uh, it might actually help some of you and there might be something in there that will assist you as you go along as well. So the card is the number 27, as mentioned, and it is Nelly's The Alchemist, and it is for inner transformation and irrevocable change. And it says here in fairy and sometimes in our in our world, alchemy is the study and practice of transforming the soul from the lead of primitive conditioning reactions to the gold of spiritual and practical attainment. Nelly's is mistress of the alchemical arts. And she also understands that daily life is a spiritual exercise. She recognizes that transformation may take place from the inside or from the outside in. When things are stuck and movement has become impossible, Nelly's firmly waves her rowan wand and things happens, happen in ourselves and in the world. Sometimes things just cannot move without readjustment, perhaps even radical alignment, realignment, we may feel that we should be able to bring our plans to fruition. We may be aiming at the impossible, or at least at the very inappropriate. Part of the impossibility or inappropriateness may be the result of our own attitudes, beliefs or behaviors. And part of it may be circumstances in the world, things that are beyond our control. Often inner transformation is required in order to achieve what we wish for in the outer world, just as conversely, changes in the outer world often elicit inner transformation. Personal inner change is the truest transformation of all, and in the long run, it is the only change that really matters. I'm going to leave it there. I think the, the, the bit that's most poignant for me is the fact that we are in a state, we are on a stage in our lives where we can work um alchemically you know we've always been able to work alchemically we've always had it uh, at our fingertips but right now more than ever the change is quite obvious and how we can change things alchemically is quite obvious uh, so i'll talk about alchem alchemy uh, a little bit more in my next energy forecast but i think right now more than anything there's the ability to be able to create all that you wish for and all that you want but only if you believe in it only if you allow yourself to feel capable of it and able to do it. So I think the emphasis this week is very much, or as it's been last week as well, I think it's very much about going ahead and believing in yourself and believing that you are able to do this, even if it is going to be difficult, even if it does require that you're going to need to learn something, change something, shift something about yourself in order to make that difference. You need to be able to go ahead and believe that it's possible. 
it's possible in order to be able to effect that alchemical change all right so i'm going to leave you with that i think that it's a lovely card to have i think that it's a card that bodes really well for you it's telling you that you can create all that you wish for and it's just about going ahead and making it happen for yourself all right so i wish you a wonderful week ahead please stay safe stay healthy and stay well many blessings to you so for those of you who've chosen the second option here we asking what is the message that you've come here to hear what is it that you need to hear as you go ahead in the week ahead We have the number 23 we have the green woman and i feel like for the week ahead for you there's a lot of vibrance there's a lot of energy at hand there's a lot of energy that can be used or to be tapped into uh, pockets of energy that can be tapped into that can be used and and moved ahead or help you to to shift and to move i feel here that there's a gusto that there's a, this kind of eagerness to get going and to do what it is that you need to do. It's, it's almost like a greed, like a greed. I want to do this. I, I need to have this. I must do this. And there's that energy that's fueling you or that's behind you, that's pushing you forth. So you are not going to have a situation where you feel lack of motivation. You're not going to have a situation where you need to justify to yourself why you need to do something because there is going to be something here that's going to be pushing you ahead. And it's almost as if you're going to be wanting to do whatever it is that you need to do in order to be able to get to where you need to get to, in order to be able to reach those goals, in order to be able to uh, get where you want to go to. And it might be a little bit mischievous as well. You might be thinking about bending the rules a little bit in order to get to where you need to go to. And that's, you know, really up to you to consider whether it's okay to do that or not. But I feel that this likelihood of a high likely, a likelihood, a high chance of of you thinking along those lines in this week, or there being the possibility to do something like this, there being the possibility to bend the rules, to be able to get around quicker than most people are able to with regard to this kind of, uh, you know, course or, or study or whatever it is, pathway that you've chosen. So I feel as if, you know, there's an opportunity here for this week for you to be able to make some leaps and bounds in terms of how to move ahead, in terms of where to go to with this and, and what to do. And it might just be a conversation that you have uh, sometime at the beginning of the week, perhaps on a Tuesday or Monday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, that will help you to um, cut some corners with regard to this, but still be legit, still do this whole thing legitimately but be able to cut some corners as to where you need to go to. So um, it's almost like there's an ability here that can help you fast track things. It can help you um, kind of fast track things for you so that you have a better understanding, a faster understanding, or uh, you're able to consolidate your understanding much faster than you would normally be able to. So I've gone ahead and read for the other option, the first option, and I think I'd like to do the same for you as well. So I was saying in the first option that I really like the booklet that comes along always with Brian Froud's um, decks. They're nice hardcover books and they're not flimsy, etc. And I'm just going to go ahead and read what he has to say about the Green Woman. In fact, the text is actually done by Jessica Macbeth. And so, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and read a little bit of that for you. So it reads the card 23, the green woman, wildness, natural magic, expectant gratitude, untrammeled creativity. The green woman dances naked in the moonlight and in the sunlight and the shadows as well. She doesn't care what you think of her. She knows her own worth from her experience of life. She is the feminine, vital, vegetative force that enables a root to crack a stone, the reed to bend in the wind and the oak to stand against the storm. The graceful slow motion dance of the green woman shows us how to release the constraints of artificial rules and limitations and find our true pattern of growth. Each of us, rooted or not, has an inborn pattern of perfection to, to guide our growth. Earth 
mother nurtures us, sun father energizes us, storms batter us, and sometimes we must bend before them. Other life preys upon us on the one hand and nourishes and supports us on the other. Within the framework of the real world, we seek our path to realizing our own potential and finding our own fulfillment. The Green Woman reminds us that where the ground is fertile, something will grow. It may be nettles or thistles or roses or carrots or sandburrs or peaches, but it will be something because fertile earth never remains empty. She tells us to stay earth, to attend to our own growing ground, keeping it fertile, aerated and well watered, and to pay attention to what grows there. It is up to us to root out what we don't want within ourselves and to nurture what we do. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, there are some noises outside. I'm not really sure what, of what's going on. Somebody's dropped something. And uh, yes, so pardon that. There are also some gale force winds uh, out here. So pardon um, the windows and doors creaking, if you can hear that. So I feel that that message is very much in alignment with the uh, the channel that I've just done. Because there's a sense that, the sense that I'm getting is that there's a way to go about doing something. Um, like there's a certain way of doing something, right? And that's the institutional method. It's the way it's supposed to be done. It's the way which is recognized, etc. But there's a way to fast track through it. There's a way to get through it and to still be able to have that knowledge and to be able to have that certification or that that um, that understanding that you that you receive as a result of it. And there's a, a way of doing it that's much quicker. And it's only about being able to make that phone call to ask to see if it's possible or not and to be able to move ahead in, in that way. So I think that uh, that is um, what the message is for you this week. It's about being able to find a way to get to where you need to without all the hassle of admin or bureaucracy or all the other uh, red tape that might be in your way, but to find a way around that that is still legitimate and that's still going to take you to your destination. And there is something about that this week. I hope that message resonates with you. I hope that helps you in some kind of way. And um, yes, and I think that for those who aren't battling with red tape or bureaucracy or anything like this, I think the message here is to be able to flow into yourself without the constraints of what it needs to be like, without the rule book that somebody else has written and to ask yourself, what is your the rules for you? What is your rule book for your print, for your soul, for your being? And how can you take your own growth and evolution uh, as a soul forward uh, at this time without actually, um, yeah, without actually being held back by what society expects from you or what is expected um, you know, so if you're doing some kind of study with for yourself or, or trying to move along a certain path for yourself and you think that you ha can only do it in one particular way, the way that it's been written out or talked or discussed, it isn't true. There is a way that you can do it that's personal to you, that will be most fulfilling and beneficial to you. And that is the path that you need to seek and choose as you go along this week. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with that. I wish you a wonderful week. Stay blessed, stay well, stay safe and healthy. And until our next reading. So for those of you who have chosen the third option here, we are asking, what is it that you need to know right now? What is the message that you've come here to hear? And what is that message that's going to help you to go along in this week or in the time ahead? I think it's this one. I'm going to go with this. So the card we have here is the number 43. And the card is, is titled Jiu the Slow. So we have a, a character here who's very mellow, who takes things in the autumn of his life, who takes things in the autumn of his life, even if he's at the beginning of his life, even if he ought to have lots of energy. He takes things quite slow. And you might find as you go along in this week that you need to do things a little bit slower, that you might need a little bit more time to be able to gauge what is going on and what it is that you need to be doing, that you might find more relief and more comfort in taking things one step at a time, a bit slower than you have usually, than you usually have. 
it feels to me that there's a certain degree of comfort or a certain degree of protection, safety in being able to take things a little slower, in, in being able to find contentment by taking things slower. And I feel here that there is a sense of just being able to enjoy life right now, not actually having to rush anywhere, not actually having to go anywhere, not having to do anything, but just simply just sit back for the next couple of weeks and enjoy life and not do too much. Just feel what life has to give to you. I feel that if you don't do this, you might feel a bit of anxiety. Or if you do feel a bit of anxiety, then what you need to do is just slow down and not think too much and not think about how things will unravel or how things will unfold. And if there's some planning that needs to be done, perhaps now is not really the right time for it. Perhaps it needs a little bit more time before you can get to that point. Not to say that you can't discuss it or think about it or think about how to go about doing things, but rather to wait a little bit before you finalize anything. Um, for the last uh, couple of readings here for this uh, deck for this week, I've actually read from the book and I want to go ahead and do the same thing. So I mentioned in the other readings as well that I really like Brian Froud's uh, books because they're hardcover and they're not flimsy at all and that you can really enjoy working with them and reading uh, through them. So I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit about Ji Wu, the slow, uh, right here. So it says, Cycles of time, slowness, waiting, patience. Jiu is the gnome of slow processes. How long is it going to take for that water to wear that rock away? How much has that mountain grown or eroded in the last millennium? Jiu is there watching attentively, making certain that things don't happen too fast, resulting in a slip shod job. It is he who watches the waves slowly encroach on the shore, wearing away the cliffs. Elsewhere, to keep things in balance, he watches certain mountains slowly grow taller. Jiu is also the master of the clarification process, whereby we let something sit quietly while the impurities slowly settle themselves out, allowing substance to purify itself in time. Jiu doesn't understand why we rush about so much, missing out on the slow changes in the world worlds around us. He is amazed at the stress and problems we create for ourselves by doing that. He wonders how we can survive if we don't sit down and watch the sunrises and sunsets, or if we don't have time to enjoy our lives, especially if we are so busy rushing around with the idea that we're making things good for ourselves later, but never now. The thing about Jiwu's processes is that they all proceed in good order. Fruit ripens on time, grain is ready at harvest time, the moon and earth circle each other in inequitable balance, neither too quickly nor too slowly. These natural processes work well, and in our own lives, it is useful to use them for models, finding the right pace, the pace that allows natural, low stress growth and progress and joy. The world isn't turning any faster, so we might ask ourselves, why are we trying to cram more into our days? Oh my word. <laughs> That, that really speaks to me and me trying to do a million things in, in each of my days. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that here, you know, it's about, uh, as I said in, in, in my channeling, that it's really about being able to enjoy the comforts of slowing down um, through these processes. But the one thing that stood out for me in this message uh, here by the author or by um, Jessica Macbeth, um, that's who has written the text here, is that, um, you know, impurities find themselves, find their ways in, find their way in and find their way out of your body, in your life, etc. And it's when we become impatient that we make um, hasty decisions that may be more invasive or more harmful to our bodies, but it's rather better to take our time and to be able to allow our bodies to make their own processes uh, to eliminate, to get rid of that which we do not need and not to impose it upon ourselves because that can actually be quite harsh, right? Um, like not to force a detox because that can actually be quite rough, you know? Um, and, you know, it's quite a fad nowadays. It's quite fashionable to go around doing all kinds of things uh, to your body. And it's quite harsh for the body. The body you now has its own wisdom and has its own way of being able to rid itself of its of 
its impurities, if you're in flow, if you're allowing it to flow. And I think that's all that's necessary, just the focus and the uh, love for yourself and loving yourself enough to allow yourself to heal through that process. And so I feel that that is a message here, uh, not to not to actually be too hasty and to make um, any decisions that are going to be harmful to yourself in the short term or the long term. Right. I don't know why but that message has come through for you. So I don't know if you were planning to do a, a, an invasive uh, surgical procedure or something like this, perhaps wait a little longer. Perhaps it's not necessary at this moment. Anna. Perhaps it's going to rid it, your body's going to rid itself of something that um, it can, it needs to by itself. And I just want to throw in a disclaimer here. I'm not a medical doctor. And so you need to uh, see your doctors and um and consult a, a medical practitioner if you need to to uh, find out what's what's going on with you and not base your your health or your well-being on any psychic um, service especially not one like this which is in a public platform for many people all right uh, so uh, having said that I just feel that there's something more to this card and I'm going to take a minute to to pay attention to that yeah I feel that now I think that you know when we realize that we are part of nature when we realize that we are um, this gnome here is just like this leaf or these other leaves that we mirror nature and that nature mirrors us that we are one being almost we sway together we move together the wind pushes us together the wind the, the elements wear away at us together. It's something that we, we need to recognize. It's something that we need to understand that we're part of nature. We're part of this one whole um, being, which is the Mother Earth in a way. We're part of her creatures. And this is something that also brings um, a sense of trust and faith and um, a sense of knowingness as you go along. All right, and knowing this, that it's all going to be okay. All right, I'm going to leave you there. I hope that message has been useful for you. I hope it has been helpful. And I'm wishing you a fabulous week ahead. I have missed you all. And uh, it's good to be back. So let me know how you all are doing. And I wish you a fabulous, blessed week ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. And blessings abound from Kismet Rising.